Welcome to ECA Limu Learning Simplified and welcome to this lesson. In the previous lesson, we have been discussing some of the applications of the magnetic effect on electric current. And one of the applications that we discussed was an electric bell. We later discussed an electric DC motor. Then we discussed something like a magnetic tape recorder. And then now today, we are going to discuss a moving coil meter and earpieces. My name is Albert. I hope you will enjoy the lesson. By the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to explain how a moving coil meter works and how earpieces work. The first application in this case is a moving coil meter and it's used to measure the intensity of small current. It can also be used to measure the voltage across a battery. So this device uses the principle of electromagnetism and it has specific parts and we have a diagram of the same on the screen. First it has a scale, then it has a pointer, then in this case it has a permanent magnet which is in U-shaped or horseshoe-shaped, then it has two air springs or strings, in this case it has an upper string and it also has a lower string here. Then it has a moving coil and this coil is an insulated copper wire wound a round and soft iron core. It also has a soft iron core in which this moving coil is wound. Then it has two jewel pivots. The jewel pivots are here. This is the first one. And there's another one here, the jewel pivots. Then it has this magnet uh, is curved. The reason why it's curved, we're going to realize that it's going to give us radial magnetic field. This north pole and south pole, as you can see at this point here, it is curved. Then finally, it has a pointer and the scale. So the working of this one, we are going to discuss it later. But generally, these are the most instruments that we use in the lab as voltimeters and ammeters. So a moving coil meter consists of a permanent magnet. This is the permanent magnet that we have here. And this permanent magnet is curved. It's curved so that it can produce what we call the radial magnetic field. So it consists of a permanent magnet and it also consists of a coil or a solenoid which is wound on the spindle or sometimes we call a spindle a pivot. So when it's wound on this pivot, it can rotate or it can move freely in this spindle. And now when an electric current passes through the coil, when the electric current is going to pass through the coil, because we are going to, in, to, to bring in electric current at the lower uh, air spring, and then in this case, it will get out through the upper air spring. Now, when that electric current passes through the coil, it generates a magnetic field of its own. This coil is going to have current in it, so there will be a magnetic field on that wire in the coil. Remember we said whenever there is an electric current passing through a wire, there's a magnetic field around it. So it will generate a magnetic field on its own and this field will interact with the permanent magnet field. In this case, remember, after this coil has generated a magnetic field, this permanent magnet will also producing a magnet field from North Pole to South Pole. Now when this magnetic field and the field from this coil carrying current interact and they are going to cause a motion in the process making this um, GLL pivot to rotate. When it's rotating now, that is what is going to cause this uh, pointer to move about. Remember in this case, whenever you have magnetic field inside the coil and then there's a magnetic field due to this permanent magnet, if you position your finger using the left hand rule from Fleming's left hand rule, you're going to realize that this one is going to cause motion. So the motion that will be produced is set in a way that it can make this pointer to move around. Now when this pointer is moving, it will be measuring the strength of the current or the voltage that is passing through that coil. So the, the magnitude at which this pointer will be moving depends on the amount of current that is coming in or the amount of voltage that is coming in. So the poles of this magnet making the moving coil meter are curved 
and together with the soft ion core, they produce a very intensive radial magnetic field that cuts the coil at right angle, whatever the position the coil is. Remember, when the magnetic field from the magnet is cutting a coil carrying current at right angle from Fleming's left hand rule, we realized that there's maximum motion or maximum force which is produced. So what happens whenever current is passing through these springs or this coil uh, around this soft iron core, then these strings that we have here, the upper string and the lower spring will be wounding up or will be winding up. And this one produces a mechanical force that opposes the turning of the coil. So these coils, all these springs will be turning depending on the strength of the magnet or the, the, the strength of the force which is produced by this electromagnet. Now, when the force between this uh, spring and this uh, force produced by this electromagnet balances out, then the motion of this pointer stops. Now, when, it, you, when you withdraw the current, the, the force or the, the, the tensional force due to this spring which was winding up or which was wounding up will restore back the pointer to its original position. And that's why the instrument that we have on the screen here, in this case, a voltimeter, when it's used in the lab, whenever you connect uh, current to it or whenever you connect a battery to it, you will realize that this pointer will move. But it will move depending on the, the voltage that the battery you are connecting has. So in the process, it will stop at a point. If the voltage is 1.5, it will stop at 1.5. And then when you withdraw your battery or your cell, then this pointer will come back to zero. The reason why it comes back to zero is because of the tensional force which had built up when this force which was produced by the electromagnet was making this upper string and the lower string to coil up. So what you are going to realize about this um, moving coil meter is that they are very sensitive and precise and then they have very low resistance and that's why we connect them in see in parallel we like in this case if for a voltimeter we connect them in parallel with the, the in a circuit and for ammeters we connect them in series so the second application that we are going to consider in this case is a telephone receiver and this telephone receiver is very important because it plays a very crucial role in converting electrical signals into sound signal. The main parts of these telephone receivers, first we have a small permanent magnet where we are going to place two soft iron core by its side and it will form a U-shaped magnet. So the second important part is the soft iron core and there are two and they are, they are on the sides of this permanent magnet. Then we have a solenoid which is wound on these two soft iron bars which are in or which are inside or with the permanent magnet. Then we have a magnetic alloy diaphragm and this one is magnetic and we're going to see its role later. Then we have the electrical signal. So this arrangement is made in such a way that a steady current flow through the coil of this electromagnet causes it to exert a pull on this diaphragm. So whenever these two soft iron core where we have a solenoid wound on them, whenever they will get magnetized, they will be pulling this uh, magnetic alloy diaphragm. And whenever they are pulling it, now they are going to convert the sound which is here with all the, the, the air which is in between these will be vibrating and in the process, the sound signal will be produced. We can now discuss the working mechanism of an earpiece and this starts when a person speaks at a microphone at one end, they will set up a varying electric current which will represent the speech which is made. Now in that case, when that electric current is passed through a solenoid in the earpiece, if that signal from the person who is speaking on the microphone is passed through this solenoid which is uh, wounding this two soft iron cores, what is going to happen, the strength of the, electro, of the magnetic field in the diaphragm. This diaphragm, the magnetic field in the diaphragm will be altered and therefore these two soft iron cores will gain magnetism and they will be attracting and releasing this diaphragm. Now when the diaphragm 
will be attracted and being released, it will vibrate and it will produce the sound which was made by the person who was speaking or who was producing the voice in the microphone. So in that case, this earpiece is going to give out the output of that sound. So that will mark the end of our lesson today and the end of our topic magnetic effects of an electric current. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed teaching it. In the next lesson now, we will discuss a new topic which lies under mechanics and we call it Hooke's Law.